Let's look at classifying power functions. Now, we have to concern ourselves with three different power functions. Now, a power function is where we've got y equals x to the power of a. Now, there are three different cases, all depending on what a is. We get case one, if a is a positive integer. Case two, if a equals uh, 1 over n, where n is any positive inter integer, greater than 1, of course, so if a is a fraction, and case 3, if a equals negative 1. Let's look at each of these cases. If I look at case 1, where a is a positive integer, this is essentially a polynomial. It's like y equals x squared, or y equals x to the fourth, or y equals x to the fifth. It's anything that is a positive integer. So anytime a is a positive integer, we end up with a polynomial function. Now, case two, we have root functions, where a equals one over n, and n must be a positive integer. So what does this look like? This looks like y equals x to the one over two, or the same as the square root of x, or y equals x to the one-third, which is the same as the third root of x. And you can keep on going up. y equals x to the one-quarter, also known as the fourth root of x. And this just keeps on going as, as high as you want. Oops, sorry, let's make that one-fifth. And y is equal to the fifth root of x. Let's take a look at what those graphs would look like. Now when we're looking at root functions, we have to look at them in two separate groups. We've got the first group, which are even powers, so, I'm sorry, even roots, so the square root, the fourth root, the sixth root, things like that, and odd roots, which is the third root, and the fifth root, and the seventh root. Let's start off by looking at even roots. There's a graph of three even roots. This one here is y equals the square root of x. This one is y equals the fourth root of x. And this bottom one here is y equals the sixth root of x. You'll notice how, as the root gets higher, the beginning point here gets steeper, but the later part here gets flatter. So pay attention to that. The other thing you'll notice is there's nothing in the negative side. There is no way to have a negative y. You also can't have a, ne have a negative x, because you can't take the square root or the fourth root or the sixth root of any negative number. That you have to reserve for the odd roots. Well, let's look at them now. When I look at odd roots, we see similar graphs, except now we have it also continues into the negative x and negative y. It the stuff that's in quadrant one looks much the same as even roots, but now we also have the quadrant three stuff. So this one right here, would be y equals the third root of x. This next one right here, I don't have room to write it in there, is y equals the fifth root of x. And this last one is y equals the seventh root of x. Now, just like when we were looking at even roots, as the root gets higher, like the seventh root as opposed to the fifth root, as it gets higher, this part gets steeper, and this part gets flatter. 
you'll notice the same thing is happening down here. As the root gets higher, this part gets steeper, and this part gets flatter. It's hard to see when it's cut off like that, but that's, that's what it looks like. These are both power functions, or root functions, but they're in different types when you, whether you look at an odd root or an even root. The last case we're going to look at is called the reciprocal function. Now this one, a equals minus 1. So we're now we're looking at y equals x to the negative 1, which more correctly is written as y equals 1 over x. Its graph looks like, it looks like this. Now, notice how when you are looking at this graph, the reciprocal function has the x and y axis axis as asymptotes. So it approaches the x-axis but never quite gets there. It also approaches the y-axis but never quite gets there. So those are our root functions. We got case A, the polynomial. Case 2, the root function. And case 3, the reciprocal function.